Hi everyone, and welcome to another Autodesk screencast. My name is Zon Ta from Repro Products. Our screencast today will focus in on fabrication parts and the capabilities of fabrication within Revit 2017. Here I am in Autodesk Revit 2017. In the Systems tab of the ribbon, there is a panel called Fabrication. Also, just FYI, in Autodesk Revit 2016 R2 was when this was introduced. So 2017 has that capability. If you click the command fabrication part, it opens up the panel called MEP fabrication parts. By default, everything will be grayed out until you actually get into the settings to configure it. You can either click settings down here in the lower right hand corner, or you can also click this little arrow that's on the panel that's pointing to the lower right corner. When you click that arrow or click settings, you'll get the fabrication settings window that pops up. In this window, there is a tab, fabrication configuration, and it's asking you to specify a fabrication configuration file. When you install the software, there will be several that install by default. So you can pick the one you want to work with. I'm going to pick Revit MEP, uh, MEP Imperial Content version 2 and what ends up happening is it'll open up fabrication profiles and you have global and it will list all the different services that are available. If you want to use all of them or a particular one you just select the one you want and click add. If you double click it jumps over or if you click one hold shift and click the last one all of them will be selected and then you can click add. Now that all of the services have been specified to be loaded, click OK, and then it will load those database configuration files. Once the fabrication settings have been set up properly, you can start to use the software. So let's give it a second for it to load. And while this is going, we're going to go ahead and switch over to a 3D view to make it a little easier to see. If I head over to the Systems tab, and I use my standard Revit tools to create ductwork, or piping, or cable trays and conduits, things like that, this is pretty standard. So you know, we can go through here, and you know we can draw what we need to draw, like so. Also. If you're using the standard Revit tools, you want to also double check under the Manage tab of the ribbon, <coughs> excuse me, and double check your MEP settings and electrical settings to ensure you're using the correct routing preferences and the correct ductwork and piping accessories and fittings. If you designed your Revit model MEP systems with the standard content, you can actually switch this content to fabrication content without actually having to manually draw them using the library that's given to you. So for example, I can select either a duct or I can hit tab and select the entire and I'll get a contextual tab called modify multi-select. In here you'll see fabrication panel and you can click design to fabrication. It'll ask you which, which particular service you want to work with. You select what you need and click OK. What Revit will do is it will transfer and change those parts, uh, if you will, those ducts, to fabrication level parts. And you can see they're slightly different. If you zoom in, you can see that they actually have the fittings on both ends. And if you select one of them, you can see that there is a length option. And the length is whatever that initial design was, which is set to value. If you switch it to auto, it's going to default to 4 foot 11 as a default and it would adjust accordingly. Now, I'm going to undo that to hold it at that length. Now, I can also select it and I can click Optimize Length in the Modify MEP Fabrication tab. So if I click Optimize Length, it'll put in that 4 foot 11 inch, really 5 foot long segment, and then put in a connecting uh, piece that's remaining. Again, I can do this with this over here. So very quickly, you can use Revit fabrication tools to build a fabrication-based ductwork, for example here, with those parts that are available and without actually having to use those. 
Uh, now, if you want to build them from scratch, you can just click over here, you know, pick the service you want, pick the group you want, pick the type of object you want to work with, and then you can click and start placing them. What you'll notice too is that they have connectors on either ends and they will snap into position. And if you need to move one or rotate, you can actually just use a spacebar and click to place. And it will automatically put in however you've oriented it to go. So we do this, and then we'll go ahead and create some more. And so these fabrication tools that they're giving you is preloaded content. You can click and drag and use them to build your system. Um, and that's a very, very quick, short uh, screencast video on what is fabrication parts. Um, if I get a chance, I'll try to do an extended video on additional features, um, especially when you have the object selected and you have routing and fill and show services and things like that. Thank you very much for watching.